Oh my God. Oh my God, what happened to this series? I mean, it got me doing the John Travolta and looking around like, have I been watching the same anime for 12 episodes? Because I don't know what I just ran into. I'm gonna shoot straight from the hip. This finale was bad. It was horrible. It was so bad that it affects my entire view of the entire series because the ending is paramount. I know you probably heard that from Okada, Okada before. You've heard it before. The ending is paramount. And boy, this series was an example of that. And about two videos back, I had an entire segment at the beginning defending this series, saying that even though it had its shortcomings, even though people started to shit on it, I still defended this series as it was highly enjoyable. And even to most parts, I still liked Biba. But coming into the finale, the end of this episode, how everything went down, I got to eat crow. I mean, I was saying this series is better than Attack on Titan, but the way this all went down in the end, I can't even say this is better than Seraph right now. And that is bad. That it. Oh my God, that is bad. What the fuck with studio? What's up, everyone? It's your boy Infrared. Welcome to the Scott Report. Today, I bring you an anime review of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress, episode 12, the finale. I doubt this shit is getting a season two after this. And for me to make such a 360 on a series that I fought behind, it must have really been bad. So just getting that out the way, let's just get down to the breakdown, then I'll get to my thoughts because the majority of this is indeed going to be my thoughts and why I feel the way I do and what I expected as well as my final grade for this series. So the episode starts off with Ikoma and Karusu going in on some Kabane as they're fighting their way towards Biba and Mumei to save the day. Ikoma in his new form with deep voice and everything and he has like the scales over him like everybody else who took the vow for the black smoke monster is beginning to lose his way as he's beginning to lose his sight he's beginning to lose his sanity as we find out from the professor that there are two vows there's a black vow that turns you to the black smoke monster and there's a white vow that can heal you however he only had one of each and he've already he's already taken the black vow to turn to what he is the white one can either be used to save him or to save Mumei. He has to make a choice, and of course, he decided to save Mumei with the vow. Also, while he's fighting the um, the Kabane, he's beginning to lose his sight a little bit, beginning to lose his way. Karusu promises that if he begins to turn, that he promises that he will kill him before he turns to a monster so he can still go out human. You know how it always goes. It's the whole Walker treatment that we see in so many things that's going on. While Mume is rampaging the city, we also see Ayane able to get some of the townies together and convince them that they're human and who they need to look out for. They need to help each other escape this madness as they agree to help them try to escape the city. On the other side of things, we see Mume inside of the Black Smoke Monster as she's having nightmares of all the things that she's experienced in her life. And her trying to fight those nightmares are also fueling her as the Black Monster as she's literally fighting in her dreams. This is what the monster is doing outside, tearing up the town as it's making its way all the way through to the middle of the city. While this is going on, again, we get some epic music as Ikoma and Kurusu are going in against not only Kabane, but the remnants of Biba's men as well, as this powered Ikoma cannot be fucked with right now. He is joke free. Nobody has a name tag against him as they're jumping him, they're stabbing him. Nothing's taking effect. They were also going to run him down with a damn train, which he was able to stop with one hand with a blast and just knocks the train off the rails and it blows up. I'm okay with that. And the reason why I'm okay with that is because with him taking his black vowel and by him being a male, he was supposed to be like a more in control version of a black smoke monster. Okay, I'll live with it. But the thing is, the rest of these guys are fucking fodder to him right now as he just runs through all of them. And you know the blind haired guy who was like second in command, he just gets completely wrecked by a coma as he puts the steam gun to his chest, just blows his ass away. And that is the end of those guys as we're heading towards the castle to Biba, who is giving orders to his men. You know, it's a little short blue here, guys. He tells them that he will handle the rest from here, but he needs the people of his, his people need to save themselves. 
So they go off on their own path. And we also see that scientists gave Biba a white vial, which white vial of blood, which is plot device city, as he now has a, a white vial to heal someone too, as he reveals that he is actually a carbonary. But come on now, we should have known he was one. He had an entire crew of people that were carbonary, so it's only natural that he was one too. I hope everybody knew that already. I mean, I'm not insulting anybody, but that was just blatant. So now we have the stage set as Ikoma's heading towards Biba, Biba's heading towards him, and you got Mume locked in the middle destroying the city. So now the battle is set for Biba versus Ikoma, and Mume conveniently passes out from her monster form as she's able to see a little blue butterfly instead of red ones around her that reminds her of, I of Ikoma. She stops her rampage and passes out, and we think we're getting the battle of the century against Biba, and Ikoma, as Bebo was wrecking Ikoma at first, I mean, he was taking him down, he broke his arm and everything. However, the power of love and sisterly friendship was able to power Ikoma through as he literally stopped Bebo from stealthing his ass in the back with a shot. You know, he just came to his senses out of nowhere and said, Mume, ah, you know, I love Mume, you're my friend, I need to save you. And he shoots Bebo. One shots his ass, shoots him through the chest. Biba is down. That is it. It's like, what the fuck? Did they run out of budget or did they just completely rush this? I mean, they had this big buildup of Mube being this big smoke monster and she didn't do anything but destroy the city. She didn't have a battle with it or show any type of moves. She just turned to a smoke monster with fucking wings, which we probably called. And the whole battle with Biba was probably only a minute tops. And nothing happened. I mean, the whole fight was over in like two strikes. I mean, as much as Bebo was built up to be this badass, he really only killed people that were weaker than him because when he finally got somebody that was formidable in front of him in the guise of this super-powered Ikoma, his ass got one-shotted. That was it. That was the end of the fight. It's like, really? Come on. I want to know what went on with this. I mean, they had that ran out of budget or something. I just don't believe that with all the momentum we have for this series that the ending will be this rushed as our nemesis is down. Ikoma starts to pass out as always whenever people have a big battle. He passes out. He falls because Biba stabbed him in the heart. Next scene. However, before he passed out, he was able to give Mume the white vow, which completely healed her as we hear the ending theme playing in the background. Then he passes out, and like a true video game villain, Biba is not dead. He gets up on a rampage to kill Ikoma, only to be ran through by Mume, who basically Care Bear stares his ass by saying, you know, the weak will live, blah, blah, blah. Please stop what you're doing. And he agrees to do so and kind of apologizes and drops to his knees and dies. And again, that was the end of Biba. Even after getting up from a magical resurrection, in the end, he didn't do anything. He just accepted Mube's plea and died. So, with that being said, we got Yane, Caruso, and the rest of the crew trying to escape the city. As Biba's men, as I told you, they were told to go save themselves. They actually go to Ayane and tell her, look, we can show you how to get out of here before this city is completely destroyed and burns down, blows up, whatever the hell it's going to do, in exchange for you guys letting us join you. Like, really? After all this bloodshed and shit that these guys did, you're going to let them join? I mean, I get Ayane being the bigger person by saying they've suffered too. So if they're coming to us and they're humbling themselves that come to us in this manner, we'll go ahead and take it. Let's all leave together. But honestly, I think that's bullshit. These guys didn't do anything either besides kill fodder. So now we have more people on this crew that we're probably not going to see again anyway. As they speed towards leaving the city, Mume gets to go into Beast Queen mode once more. She's clearing the path of all the Kabane and the rails that they need to escape. And they take Biba, I'm sorry, well, we see Biba has been covered up by Mume with some flowers on him as he pretty much goes down the waist and crumble with the city. And they take Ikoma back to the train. And on the train, Ikoma comes to and he sees that he's beginning to heal too as some magical fucking way, he end up getting a white vial of blood from Biba. And I don't know if it was when he got stabbed or what happened to him. Maybe Biba had a change of heart 
and probably put it on a sword and stabbed him with it or something. It's only insinuated by Mume that Bebe did it, so we'll never know. Which again was bullshit because after all the carnage and bloodshed this dude had, he decided to have a change of heart at the end and actually help his foe. Come on, man. I mean, they had so much potential with him as a villain. I mean, he was completely vile. They might as well had him go out completely vile instead of trying to redeem him in some shape, form, or fashion by having him heal the coma. And that was literally the end of the episode is everything is well. Everybody's on the train. They're heading out as they vow to make things better for everyone else again. And that is the end of Cabinary. So with that being said, I want to get some final thoughts out there. Um, it's still some things I would have liked to know, like the Wazatori. I'm, I guess I, my theory about them was true. I guess they were probably people like Ikoma or Mume who lost um, their way completely to the virus. And then that's probably what a Kabaneri would turn into once they lost control because those things were too damn smart. We also got no resolution on where these Kabane came from. They was just fucking there and in the end they're still here and we still don't know where they came from or what they came for. Biba, even though I liked him at first because he was just pure evil, overall he just went to shit and he doesn't hold a candle to um, Ajin's villain um, Sato. Sato in any means so he's still holding a crown as best bad guy this series does get best ending theme of the season with egoist and amir and overall what do i give cabinary i'm gonna give it a five a five i think that's lower than joker game because this finale just wrecked me so bad and just took all the wind from my sails about this series that it's almost to the point where I don't want to recommend it because I just feel that like a lot of people are going to be let down by it, especially by me being so let down by it at the end. An end that was so bad that even the good parts of the series can't redeem it anymore. And again, I am a man who can admit when I'm wrong. And I came in here, I was pushing this series, and then the ending kind of makes me turn back and say, no, it is not better than Attack on Titan. So it still holds the crown for survival anime. So that's it. That's it for Cabinary in a nutshell. Thank you guys very much for joining me every week for this review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I mean, did you, do you feel the same way I did? Like, did the ending completely ruin how you feel for the series? Or did you still um, enjoy it overall? I can say it is entertaining. It's just, uh, just the way it ended just left a sour taste in my mouth. And overall, that affected my decision. It's one of those things like maybe if I did decide to watch it again, I might see it in a new light, but I'm not going to watch it again. So 5 out of 10 is what I'm giving it. Thank you guys for joining me. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as I bring you guys content almost daily right now, but we'll just have to see how it goes for the summer. But expect at least four out of seven days of a review of some shape, form, or fashion. Also, as far as reviews, be sure to check out my One Piece manga review and my Hunter Hunter live reaction or live reading or however I'm going to do it. But be sure to check it out. That's for you guys as well if you haven't checked it out already. Also, as I always say, you can be anywhere on YouTube right now if you chose to listen to me. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. So on that note, it's your boy Infrared signing out. Before I let you go, be sure to join me tomorrow as I live react to Berserk Episode 1. Big Boy Guts is back. Uh, flexing, let's go. And let's see how that goes, even though I'm a little bit worried about it. I learned my lesson from bashing CG animation from Ajin. If Berserk is still adapted and told well, that's not going to be an issue. But I'm hearing rumblings that they're going to skip an arc. That's very important to it being called Black Swordsman. So, we'll handle that bridge when we get there. It's your boy Infrared signing out. See you soon.